Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode here of Ark Survival Evolved coming at you from the island. We left the last episode on a little bit of a sweaty note, ladies and gentlemen. We had only just managed to rescue Barry here, the Baryonyx, from almost certain death via the jellyfish. And well, as you can see, this guy is back up to scratch and he's having a whale of a time. So yeah, we're back at base safely. And guys, the most important thing is we managed to get the biotoxins needed for the shocking tranquilizer darts. So, let's head on over to our breedery area and let's have a look inside our fabricator to see how the shock and tranquilizer dart crafting is going. Oh, it's actually done. Look at that. So the only thing is about the shocking tranquilizer dart is the fact that it actually has a spoil timer. You have, I believe, about a four hour spoil timer. The question I want to ask at the beginning of today's episode is, can you prolong that? So first of all, we'll try the preserving bin. Uh, oh, it actually makes no difference. Well, that's interesting. All right, well, how about a refrigerator? Can we even put it in there? Yes, we can. Uh, oh, it works. Oh, shocking tranquilizer darts. In a refrigerator. You saw it here first if you didn't know that already. And it'll prolong it to well over two real-time days worth of durability. That is amazing. See, the other thing I've done since the last episode is I have gone ahead and made rather a large quantity of tranquilizer darts. And basically what we'll be able to do with these is straight off the rip here is go ahead, put them in the fabricator and be able to make ourselves well over 100 more shocking tranquilizer darts. 107. Now, if that doesn't tickle your pickle and make you drop a like on the video to support the series here, then I don't know what will. But on that same note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all of your beautiful support throughout this series. I very much do appreciate it. If you are new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future ARC episodes here, do be sure, of course, to hit the subscribe button with those bell notifications turned on. But of course, if you want to go one further with your support and be an absolute MVP, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. Also, since the last episode, I've got myself a whole bunch more fertilizer. As you can see, my little dung beetle is doing the the job very, very nicely. Can we put another one in there? Ah, darn it. You actually can't over encumber a dung beetle. As you can see, 10.5 to put this in would bring it up to 12, and I can't do that, even though it's only a 0.3 over the uh, maximum amount of weight. So that's something to bear in mind. When you get a dung beetle, prioritize nothing but increasing its weight. So I've done the calculations, and the magic number we are looking for is 42 loads of fertilizer, okay? If we get 42 loads of fertilizer, that will allow us to put a piece of fertilizer in every single crop in our greenhouse here. Since the last episode, I've done another pass at putting a whole bunch of medium animal feces in here, so uh, that should keep us going over for a little while. And all the while, we're getting ourselves a bunch of fertilizer as well. So yeah, it's all coming together very, very nicely, my friends. And uh, yeah, this is actually a tactic I learned from the ARC wiki. You could simply put a dung beetle on wander in a wooden cage and that will contain it, allow it to wander, and as a result, be able to create a whole bunch of fertilizer pretty darn quick like. So yeah, this is awesome. So while we're waiting for the shock and tranquilizer darts to be uh, crafted up, we do of course have the comment of the day from the last episode to do, since we kind of ended that episode on a little bit of a sweaty note, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Roy Denley says, put your industrial cooker in the greenhouse where the storage was. That is a fantastic idea. I really do appreciate the suggestion there, buddy. And for today's episode, episode 19, Mini Watto says, it's worth noting that the XP your chibi gets is much lower if you kill alphas with a tame. If you can finish them with a bow or gun or sword or weapon, it'll level up much quicker. Now that... I did not know. We'll have to go ahead and give that a bit of a go if and when we come across another alpha. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for the comments there, buds. Really appreciate it. All right, so all the shock and tranquilizer darts have been created, and it's a wonderful sight, isn't it? <laughs> oh, there's so many there. All right, what I want to do is uh, see where the industrial cooker is. And what it requires. Okay, so we've already got the oil. The polymer's pretty easy to come by. I'm pretty darn sure we've got enough cementing paste laying around. Once again, it's just the metal ingots. So, yeah. Maybe today could be the day where we get an industrial cooker as well. We'll have a forge and a cooker in two episodes. Oh, hey there, 
random parasaur. What are you doing in here, man? Either spawned in here or wound up roaming off of any one of these here cliffs. Aha. Uh -huh. Sure. You do you there, Parasaur. So then, time to grab Adam, time to grab Abe, and time to go to the mountains for a metal run. Yeah. Talking of alphas, ladies and gentlemen, there's an alpha Carno over there. Oh, it's level 55. Could be a worthy adversary indeed, my friendos. I mean, mostly in terms of its health pool. It is going to take a fair while to kill that guy. And somehow, we'll have to visually determine whether or not it's close to death if we are wanting to try out that chibi XP thing that you guys were talking about. So yeah, there we go, my friends. Pretty much one full stamina bar's worth of stamina used. And uh, here we are. We are now at the tech cave entrance. So, let's get ourselves some metal. And, yeah, get wrecked. I'm actually not that interested in the obsidian. So, we're just going to get rid of that. Yeah. All right. I think we've got a pretty substantial amount of metal here. All right, my friend. So, here we are back at base. Let's get him set down there to the point where we should be able to just, I don't know, sort of turn around and be able to get all the stuff necessary. We need to turn this thing on, of course. And, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. A ton of metal, and we can literally just sort of do a 180 and uh, be able to take all the metal out of here, even despite being massively encumbered. Uh, oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Darn it, man! I thought I'd be able to put stuff in here! Oh, you hate to see it. All right, what about now? Boom, do it, and then there we have it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, right, can I still get stuff out of you? Kind of. One, two, three, four, and then turn around, and I one, two, three, four. Ha ha! Is it just me who's noticing that this thing doesn't make a single sound? I mean, it makes a bit of a sound when you turn it on. But that's it. It, it doesn't make any other sound aside from that. I was maybe expecting some, like, metal creaking sounds or something like that. Because obviously, you know, metal plus heat equals creaking, you know, typically. But, yeah, there's just sort of nothing. A bit underwhelming, really, isn't it? So then, what do you guys think, eh? In the meantime, while we're waiting for the metal to smelt up, maybe we go for another underwater adventure, eh? A lot of you guys were leaving some hints and tips in the comments area of the last episode regarding defeating the Nidria, the very annoying jellyfish dudes. And for the most part, it just involves using a crossbow because the crossbow is super effective against them. Now, also, according to you guys, the Basilosaur, which is an underwater giant tame, is actually immune to the Nidaria's shocking attacks. So, it could be worthwhile us going ahead and seeing if we could tame one. I think that would be a lovely idea. And, uh, well, it'll be another tame to add to our little arsenal of tames, eh? The only thing is, though, as far as I can remember, the Basilosaur spawns very, very far underwater. Water, so it might be worth going for a megalodon still just so that we are able to go far down because I'm not entirely sure how Barry would fare being that low down in the water You know what I'm saying? I, I think it might be a little bit dangerous So if we're going for underwater taming we are going to need to use our crossbow to knock these dudes out So let's go and get our trank arrows on here the long neck rifle Unfortunately as far as I know cannot shoot underwater so we cannot use our shocking trank tranquilizer darts against them which is a little bit sad considering we just made like well over a hundred freaking shocking tranquilizer darts but uh never mind it's all good do we have a basilosaur saddle blueprint no we don't oh that's a little bit sad isn't it all right uh where do we make a basilosaur uh it's right here uh, oh, that's actually really easy the only really expensive part of that is 55 metal ingots aside from that it's pretty darn easy to make this. Just need to quickly repair our scuba gear and then we should be ready to tackle this goal, my friendos. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. I wonder if I could, like, jump my way out of here. If I could do some, like, parkour stuff or something. If I, like, go over here. Aha! <laughs> yeah, the Baryonyx is a parkour pro. All right, then we just jump down here. Hey! All right, my friends, we're back on the water and I'm hoping... That we're not going to die horrifically. Oh, there they are. Those pesky, evil little jellyfish. 
Yeah, that's a fat no-no. I'm not I'm not tangling with them again. Now then, needless to say, finding a Megalodon is actually way, way easier than finding a Basilosaur. As far as I can remember, you can usually spot a Basilosaur from afar because they will usually have a large amount of fish swimming alongside them. Uh, okay, there's some nasty looking dudes down there. Ooh, electric eels and such. Ugh. No, no, I don't like the look of those guys. Oh, guys, look, 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 there we are. That's a basilosaur. Level 45. Ah, oh, that's a bit sad, isn't it? Oh, hey, there's an Ichthai following us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. That's how you can easily tell when there's a basilosaur roaming around. They've got like a whole freaking conglomeration of dudes following them. Oh, that's kind of cool. But, again, we need a 100+. plus. I just realized we could totally use this opportunity to get ourselves a whole bunch of silica pearls. Because, believe it or not, silica pearls are something we are extremely low on in terms of our supply. So, uh, yeah. We could also get ourselves a ton of oil if we wanted to. I'm pretty sure oil weighs quite a lot more than these silica pearls, though. So, uh, just something to bear in mind, I guess. Uh, but for now, I think we're mostly safe around here. No one's coming up and around to us. No? All right, I think we're good. It's just that shark up there. All right, let's go ahead and get some uh, get some pearls here. Yeah, baby. Ah, oh, so good, baby. So good. 300. Nice. All right, maybe we get some oil while we're here? Sure. Let's do it. Okay, so 600 carry weight by putting all the various bits and bobs on this guy. It only goes up to 150. Uh, turns out we could probably carry way the heck more. Oh, no, hang on, but then again, okay, we didn't take into consideration our own weight, so 300. All right, well, I don't go ahead and weigh this guy down to the point where he loses movement speed, so, um, yeah, I'm going to not do that. No! No! No, 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 no! Not good! Spinny attack! Spinny attack! Okay, I think they're all stunned. Go, 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 go! Do! Do we gotta do! Do we gotta do! <laughs> oh, at least it's not as bad as the Nadaria! Okay, okay, confirmed. When you go ahead and uh, do the spinny attack, it seems to stun them. That's perfect! Yeah! God! No! 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 Get out of here! Yeah! Huh, that was easy. Alright, well, it uh, turns out the eels are actually not as bad as the freaking jellyfish. Good. I could be wrong, but I do believe that this is a different Basilosaur. It is. It's level 70. Okay. Well, we're going in the right direction, I guess. Look at that, guys. My Baryonyx now has a whopping 10,000 health. And that was the goal I was wanting to go for. This guy is basically going to be indestructible. <laughs> Although I've said that in the past that he still died, hasn't he? So, um, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves, eh? <laughs> what the hell is that? A Mosasaur? Uh... Those guys aren't hostile, are they? I can't remember ever seeing one before. Unless my memory's playing tricks on me. A level 50 Megalodon. There's a lead sixth eye, whatever they're called. Oh, there's a Plesio. Oh, there's a lot of Plesio. Oh, sweet lord, there's a lot of things going on. Okay. Whoa! Oh, where's a 120? There's a 120! We have our candidate, ladies and gentlemen. We have our candidate. We just need to sort of, kind of, somehow get that level 120 to come up here without us annoying the plesios. I don't know how we're going to achieve that, but if we could, that'd be amazing. What's this guy? Are you a Basilo? I can't tell what level it is because it's too far away. Darn it. Ah. All right, well, uh, let's see if we can't... Oh, wait, have they noticed me? I hope not. What level were you, sir? Were you the 120? Uh, yes, you were. All right, all right. We have our candidate, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's right, buddy. We're going to try and get you way up top here, all right? Way up top. This guy here, I can actually go for him. Because guess what? You can shoot off of the back of a Baryonyx. That certainly makes things easier, doesn't it, guys? Yeah. Boom. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's hope for the best. We're looking to not mess this up massively, all right? If we can keep this guy near-ish the surface, we're going to have a good time with this, all right? So, yeah. We're just kind of doing a bit of a circle action here. Oh, man. Guys, we're going to have ourselves a level 100 plus Megalodon. I'm actually pretty hyped about this. Oh, it's swimming away, guys! That means it is very close to being KO'd. We want to make sure that we don't accidentally 
wind up, uh, you know, hitting an arrow into it while it's KO'd. So we'll give it a few seconds in between shots, okay? Okay, maybe another one? I don't think it's going to be long now, guys. Oh, it's out! It's out! It's not moving! Yes! <laughs> oh, 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 there's another one. Okay, my victory is short-lived, guys. Uh, okay, kill it. Kill it while it's done. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Kill it with Barry. Okay, so question. Can I use my uh, cooked prime meat here to go ahead and uh, tame that megalodon? Only if so, we're gonna. All right, so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a little bit of that. And then we wait. Okay, it is indeed a taming resource. Brilliant. Blimey, we couldn't have taken too much longer with this guy. We only have about one third of the durability of our scuba tank left. So, um, yeah, we couldn't have gone for much longer. I mean, yeah, it's a Megalodon. It's not quite a Basilosaur, but I tell you what, it's still one of the two underwater creatures that I was wanting to tame in today's episode. So, do you know what? I'm going to consider that a big old win. We just need to wait for it to be tamed, take it back to base, and uh, yeah, we'll get our industrial cooker made and put inside of the greenhouse. Oh my god, look at how low the freaking health bar is. I think one more hit would have killed it, guys. One hit. That is a little bit too close for comfort, if you ask me. But there we are, plus 59 levels upon being tamed. I think the thing I find most interesting about the Baryonyx is if you look on the top right there beside my face cam, you can still see it has an O2 tank, which is interesting because when you go ahead and check out its stats, it doesn't have oxygen. It can infinitely breathe underwater. So why there's still an O2 tank in the corner there is rather beyond me, but uh, hey ho. I mean, still, we have infinite underwater breathing, so, you know, I ain't gonna complain about it, am I? <laughs> yeah! Melvin the Megalodon. Yeah, level 179, and it's gonna have a decent armor valued freaking saddle. 64 armor value. Hey, it's pretty decent. All right, so here we are, guys. <laughs> we finally have a shark! Ah, brill. Where's my, uh, oh, it's actually way slower than my Megalodon. Interesting. Hey, little tortoise. Dun, 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 Go on, get wrecked, get wrecked. Oh, wow, five damage versus 153. You, my good sir, are an embarrassment. I wonder how much damage this Megalodon could really do if I buffed up its stats. Oh, talking of which. <laughs> All right, about 400 health added per time, which I think is pretty decent. Yeah. Hey, I'm feeling pretty good about this shark. I guess the question, though, is this. How are we going to store this guy? I don't think I've ever actually made an underwater sort of tame pen before. So... Maybe this is the series where we do that. Seems to be a series of many first times is this, my friendos. And you know what? I absolutely love it. All right, what level are you there, buddy? Level 20? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go tussle with a fellow shark. Hey, buddy. Da! <laughs> you can't kill me. Do you not know who I am, sir? Ha! Huh? Yeah, that's right. Get the bleeding effect, you son of a gun. <laughs> oh, interesting. So it turns out you can regen the Megalodon's health with both raw fish meat and regular raw meat. But the raw meat appears to be more effective at restoring about five units of health compared to this, which only does... Oh, hey there! I'm trying to explain health regen, you son of a gun. Get, get out of here. God, you embarrassment. Go away. But uh, yeah, the uh, raw fish meat only seems to regen about maybe one and a half to two units per time. So, I don't know, just something to uh, bear in mind, I guess. The uh, regular meat is actually more effective. So, now that we've got 5,000 health on this guy, we're now going to go for damage. Yeah, baby. Alrighty, my friends, we're just about back at base. You can see the walls dust up there. And I've got a little bit of an idea as to how I could store these underwater tames. Uh, now, obviously, we have a very limited amount of space in the river that's up there. But I think certain sections are, in fact, deep enough to the point where we can go ahead and store these guys. So, let's go and grab ourselves out a uh, cryopod. Oh, we shall go ahead and put Melvin inside of one, and then we're going to uncryopod him in the river, and uh, we are going to see if it can actually happen. Because ideally, I don't think I really want to have any creatures out here. Although, saying that, this is actually rather flat. I don't think it would take too much 
for us to go ahead and make ourselves an underwater pen for our teams here. I don't know, man. It could be a cool idea. So there we are, my friends. Barry survives another episode and another journey. <laughs> so the question is, can you go ahead and uncryopod a megalodon in the river here? The answer is yes, actually. Wow. Okay, it's not got a great deal of room. <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh, but, I mean, it, it seems kind of comfortable enough, right? Uh, sort of, you know, yeah, yeah, it works, it works, we can actually have this guy in here and it doesn't seem to be landlocked or anything, that is pretty awesome, aside from the fact that it's butt is in the air, I mean, yeah, show it off man, why not, <laughs> holy guacamole, that's a lot of metal ingots and almost certainly enough for us to make ourselves the industrial cooker, turns out we've got 1200 metal ingots left over ladies and gentlemen, this last load I'm transporting over is a actually enough. Wow, that might just be the highest amount of spare metal I think I've ever had, my friendos. Maybe, just maybe, the idea of that metal base isn't too far-fetched, eh? All we need now is some polymer, and there we have it. We'll have an industrial cooker. Well, I hate myself for doing it, but, um, I, I, I need the polymer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. The industrial cooker. Yeah. Oh, man, this is a big old upgrade, isn't it, my friends? Yeah, 1,800 metal ingots were required for it. And there we have it. All done and dusted. So we've still got a couple of storage boxes for Mijo berries and also Narco berries because let's be honest, we're going to get those in massive bulk. But ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Give me no snap point. What are you talking about? What does it need to snap to? Uh, to a wall? I'm really confused, guys. Well, when in doubt, wiki it out. It turns out that the industrial cooker needs to be snapped to an irrigation pipe. So, as a result, we need to pop on in uh, here, go to our building stuffs, and uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got a straight pipe and then flexible pipes. And uh, basically, the idea is that I want to have it sort of slap bang in the middle, uh, right on over here. It's a bit of an awkward thing to place, is this, isn't it? All right, uh, maybe a little bit over to our right, sort of here, perhaps. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, that's like almost there. We just need to sort of bring the pipe back a bit. Ah! Yeah, I think that's just about got it in the back, my friendos. I simply just sort of rotated and uh, that did the job. <laughs> All right, there we have it. Right, as far as I know, all we've got to do is just sort of flexible connect up everything. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think that'll do it. I mean, boom, a little bit of that. And then we'll need a little bit sort of here. And this is now irrigated. Okay, brilliant. So, as you can see, put various foods in this to cook advanced consumables. Cooks super fast. Hey, awesome. So there we have it, my friends. Our slightly overhauled greenhouse. We have ourselves our industrial cooker. And I've got myself a spare box here because I figured, do you know what? We've got wood here. We might as well make the most of it, right? So there we have it. Wood storage. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, it is time to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, and of course you're excited to see more, do be sure, of course, to drop a like if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.